Every month in the Hebrew calendar is connected with this particular type of energy, a particular consciousness that's related to the seasonal period of the month and on a deeper level, the spiritual quality of the month. So we want to unpack a little bit what is the month of Adar? What is this special month of when we say Mishinichnas Adar Mar Misimcha, when Adar comes, we have to increase in joy. What is the quality, the spiritual quality of Adar? So if you look in Sefer Yitzhira, one of the most ancient Jewish texts, Sefer Yitzhira speaks about Adar and relates the month of Adar with the letter Kuf. The letter Kuf is a similar letter to the letter He, which is a, a horizontal line on top and a vertical line to the right and a suspended line to the left. And the difference between the He and the Kuf is that the He, the line to the left, the suspended line completes itself, ends itself at the same, at the same place where the right line ends, and with the letter Kuf, the letter is suspended downward. So the letter Kuf is one of the 12 simple letters. There are three mother letters, seven double letters, and 12 simple letters. And the simple letter of Kuf is related to the month of Adar. We also know, according to the Sefer Yitzira, that the month of Adar is also related to the influence of Pisces, which is fish, dagim. Another aspect of the month of Adar is that it's connected with the sense of laughter. According to the Sefer Yitzir, we know there are five senses. The Sefer Yitzir speaks about 12 senses, and one of the senses is that it's a sense of laughter. So we'll just try to understand these three ideas, the letter Kuf, the sense of the month which is connected with laughter, and um, the, the sign of the month which is Dagim. And of course, we also have to understand a little bit what the name of the month itself, Adar, means. So if we look at the letter He and Kuf, we'll see that they're similar letters. And according to the Zohar, the letter Kuf is an imitation letter. In Hebrew, the word Kuf, Kuf, means monkey. And monkey represents, in Talmudic language, mon monkey represents something that's imitating human form. It imitates the He, it's similar to the letter He, but it's a little bit different. If we look in the Torah, the two, the, uh, two important characters in the beginning of the Torah, which start with the letter He and start with the letter Kuf, is Cain and Hevel, Cain and Ebel. These two characters, in the beginning of the Torah, the Torah describes these two people, and according to the Kabbalistic reading, all people, the Shoresh and Hashem, the root of the soul is either from a place of Cain, or from a place of Hevel. The difference between Cain and Hevel is that Cain, in terms of their names, is that Cain means kinyam, something that is acquired, tangible, physical. In fact, Cain was a farmer, someone that worked the land. In contrast, Hevel means breath, emptiness, something that's ethereal, philosophical, in the mind. And Hevel, by nature and by trade, was a shepherd. And the difference between a shepherd and a farmer is, is that a shepherd is nomadic, someone that has no roots in a particular place, and someone that's a farmer is very much rooted in the earth. So Cain is, in Kabbalistic reading, Cain is considered Chachmatata, lower wisdom, which is the wisdom of the earth, connected with the ground, connected with the tangible, and Hevel is the ethereal. These are two ideas. So Kuf which also represents Kayan, can also, according to the Talmud, this is what the Talmud tells us in the tract of Shabbos, Kuf is also related to the word Kedusha. So you have Kedusha, which is holiness, and you have the word Kayan, which, I'm sorry, and you have also the word Kof, which means mockery, or something that's mimicking holiness, something that appears to be as holy. So we'll talk about laughter, and then we'll understand these two dynamics, these two paradigms. When we talk about laughter, there are two forms of laughter. And it's interesting that according to Sefi Yitzira, the month is also connected with the body part, which is the tchol, the spleen. And the spleen, in the Zohar reading, the spleen is connected with laughter. And in Talmudic reading, the spleen is connected with depression. And there's really, essentially, two types of laughter. There's holy laughter and unholy laughter. What is holy laughter? All laughter, essentially, is taking something lightly. So let's say, for example classic humor is when a person feels threatened or feels small and a person starts laughing at another person or laughing at the authority or at the local government 
or at, at, let's say, historically, people that were oppressed were laughing at people that were the oppressors. That is because when a, first, a person feels inadequate and unpowerful in a certain predicament that they cannot change, they laugh. And that laughter is trying to release them of their form. Whatever the form is, the confinement is, there's a releasing of the form. And then there's a type of laughter which is more a holy laughter. On a deep level, if laughter is the release of form, and that's the definition of laughter, something breaks form, something releases a form, you have two contrasting ideas, and then they come together, a person falls off a chair, as an example, that's funny, because normally people sit down on a chair, they should be sitting. When someone falls, that some people may find that as something that's funny. It's unexpected, it's not the result, it's not the linear way of thinking that this is what happen, and then it's like an explosion, and then there's that idea of laughter. So laughter breaks a person out, releases a person from the form. In laughter itself, we have these two qualities. There's a laughter which becomes cynicism. When a person is completely formless and completely unattached to anything and laughs about anything, eventually the person will become depressed because if life has zero meaning and everything is good for a joke and there's nothing sacred in this person's life, so for a while it appears funny, but then it becomes really sad. And that's really what occurs to a lot of people that appear to be very funny and very comedic. Deeply, they're suffering from a form of depression, and that sinks a person to depression. Holy laughter is when a person is deeply rooted in a certain sacredness about who they are as people. There's a certain quality of themselves that they are very much attached to, and yet they can be light about that quality. Let's try to think about it in terms of the kind and Hevel. Hevel represents someone that has no roots. He's somebody, or that quality of somebody, that's completely ethereal, completely detached. Kain represents something that was very deeply rooted. If the month of Adar is about the holiness, the Kedusha of the letter Kuf, and connected with the sense of laughter, that type of laughter is a laughter of lo yada, of not knowing. A person knows, they know what they know, and yet they can laugh at what they know because... They're not stuck to what they know. And that opens them up and that frees them to a higher form of being. And this is the, this is the definition of holy laughter. It's really the synthesis between a kaya modality, which is very much rooted in the ground, and a hevel modality, which is very freeing. It's paradoxical, because on one hand you're very deeply rooted, on the other hand you're very free. If you look at the month, the name of the word, the word adar, adar means, in Hebrew means strong. Like Adir Bamaram Hashem. In fact, the Talmud speaks about if someone wants to plant their fields and wants to be established, they should plant it during the month of Adar. So, on one hand, Adar means very something that's very firm. It's Mazli Gover. It has strong Mazl, has strong influence. On the other hand, Adar is the only month of the year that has two months, a possibility of two months. When it becomes a leap year, we have the 13th month. When it's the 13th month of Adar, we say a Mazl. That 13th month represents a time that there is no Mazl, which is transcendent of all influences. And the word Adar stands for, Kabbalistically stands for Reisha de Lois Yada, which is the head that does not know. The head that does not know refers to this, the spiritual aspect of Keter, of transcendence. So on one hand, Adar is very much deeply rooted, and we're saying Adar is someone that is earthly, someone that if you want to plant your field and you want it to grow, you plant it in the month of Adar. And the other hand, we're saying it does not know. And the deep level of not knowing is not only it doesn't know, or we don't know it, but it doesn't even know itself. What is, how do we translate this? What does this mean? This means our relationship with ourselves, in terms of our relationship, who we are as people. When we want to be joyous, and true joy is freeing from the certain boundaries and constrictions and certain masks that we wear and certain positions that we take, and I'm very, I'm a serious, I'm, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, this is, who, this is who I am. If we take ourselves too seriously and we don't know how to laugh at ourselves, then we're also stuck. If we take ourselves completely non-seriously, then we don't, we don't have anything, we're just empty. And other is holy laughter. Holy laughter is when I'm attached to a certain version of myself, and I can play with that version. I'm deeply rooted like a Kai modality, and yet I'm also Hevel. And that's Kedusha, that's holiness. The holiness is taking yourself in the place that you're rooted, and simultaneously reflecting and saying, okay, this part of myself, I know this to be true of who I am. But you know what? Now I can laugh a little bit at this part of me because, you know what, I got too stuck in this story. And that's not who I am. I'm really a free person. And free, by definition, means that I'm my soul. And that's my spiritual quality, which is infinite. And that's why the word schok, 
which is the word, the Hebrew word for laughter, is 414, the same numeric value as the word or in self, infinite light. Because the, the holy laughter frees us from our confinements, from our forms, from our attachments, such tenacious attachments to our ego, and lets us be light. And that's holy. It's a holy laughter because it's light and yet very much rooted in who we are.